This is a 3D scanner. That is an airplane. Today we're going to be using this to make parts for that. Let's go inside and have a closer look. Can you believe that there was a time when people smoked on airplanes? It's true. And the evidence is right here inside this armrest. It's an ashtray. Today we're going to be removing this armrest and scanning it in order to turn the ashtray into a cup holder using the magic of digital design. First things first, we need to get this armrest off and back to the studio. In order to turn the ashtray into a cup holder, we first need to capture the geometry of the original armrest. We need to digitize this physical object. We've gone ahead and removed the upholstery and we'll pull out the ashtray just like that. All we're left with now are the critical mating features that make this armrest compatible with that plane. For scanning, we're gonna be using the Creality CR Scan Raptor. This is a metrology grade scanner, meaning it has resolutions down to 0.02 millimeters sufficient for inspection applications and reverse engineering. It operates using seven parallel blue lines that it projects on the surface of the object. There's a camera on board which is measuring how those lines bend around the surface, generating a height map, which can then be triangulated and turned into a mesh, which we can sculpt on, modify to our heart's desire, and then send off to the 3D printer. Crowley was nice enough to send this over for us to test, as well as providing sponsorship for this video. So if you're interested in this scanner, check out the link in the description. Let's go ahead and get this plugged in so we can get up and scan. This armrest poses a few potential challenges for scanning. First of all, it's got some pretty deep cavities. So we're gonna need to get in there with the scanner in order to capture them, which can be notoriously difficult. So it's possible that we won't capture all of that geometry and we'll need to do some post-processing in order to close any holes that we missed when scanning. The second potential issue is the fact that the surface is shiny. The camera on the scanner needs to be able to detect how the laser is bending around the surface. But because it's shiny, the laser is likely to bounce right off of it. Fortunately, we have a secret weapon to fix this issue. Scanning spray. Scanning spray goes on as a powder, but it'll eventually evaporate. So this is a non-destructive way of making this surface matte. So we've applied the scanning spray, but there's still one more thing we need to do to prepare the surface of the object for scanning, and that's applying marker dots. These help the scanner stay oriented in space, so it can maintain continuity of the data as we traverse around the object. All right, I think that should be enough. We've gone ahead and applied marker dots all around the surface of the armrest. We also have dots on this piece here, which is going to be the surface that we're scanning on. So between the two, that should be more than enough to help the scanner maintain tracking. So we're finally ready to start scanning. The scanner is on and you can see the blue lights that it's projecting. We're gonna go ahead and scan this in this orientation and then we'll flip it over and scan the bottom. So we're essentially just moving the scanner around, trying to look at the object from various angles so we can capture as much of the geometry as possible. As suspected, the deep cavities are proving to be a little bit difficult to get into. I'm just gonna rotate it so I can get a better view on the front. So the colors that you're seeing are a data quality indicator. Anything green means it's captured enough data and red means we need to go back over that area. So I'm just gonna stop it there, save this data and then reorient the armrest and capture more data. We'll then join them up at the end. So that's two scans complete. I think one more scan should do it. The one downside to the scanning spray is that it can sometimes evaporate rather quickly. So the front portion of the armrest right now is pretty much exposed, just that shiny metallic surface. Although the scanner is doing a pretty good job of capturing it, even in spite of that. All right, that's it for the scanning. Now it's on to the post-processing. 
We captured the armrest in three different orientations, so we first need to merge those point clouds in order to get one mesh. Let's hop on the computer now to do the post-processing. Stick with me, because this will be the most useful part of this entire video. We'll first delete any scan points we don't care about, like the base of the table. Merging of the data from the scans can be done right within the scanning software, but the results aren't always superb. Instead, I prefer to use a separate program called Mesh Inspector. By selecting three corresponding points on the surfaces between two scans, we can align them in space. We'll then repeat the procedure, adding the data from the third scan, before fusing them into a single mesh. I use the Mesh to Components tool to isolate the main body of the mesh from any floating points that are disconnected. These can then be deleted. With the scans merged, we can see that we missed some areas, leaving holes in the mesh. We'll take care of those using the Fill Holes tool. We can select each hole individually or simply fill all holes at once. I'll then use the Remesh option to ensure the final mesh is watertight. This will also reduce the mesh density to something more manageable, throwing away any excess data points and making future modifications easier without overburdening the computer with excessive computations. This looks pretty good for our purposes, but I did miss a fair amount on the backside of the armrest, so I went back and scanned it again, giving this mesh as a final result. I exported that and brought it into another program, Mesh Mixer. I first oriented it in space. I then used the Sculpt brush to smooth out any defects. There were a few holes that didn't get closed properly, so I selected those areas and deleted them, then patched the missing pieces. This left a bit of a bulge, so I used the erase and fill command to fix it and the smoothing brush to blend it in. As a final step, I selected the entire mesh and used the smooth command to fix any remaining bumps or lumps. It's important to play around with the settings here so we don't lose the sharpness of detail in the process. We're then going to move into another program, Blender. It's here that we'll make the modifications necessary to turn the ashtray into a cup holder. This armrest was originally designed for injection molding, meaning that there are a variety of aspects of the geometry that aren't necessary. By simplifying the shape, it will make it more friendly for 3D printing. I want to get rid of these cutouts on the back and make it flat instead. I'll do this by adding a curve, switching to edit mode, and defining points on the surface around the perimeter. I'll then select them all and click F repeatedly until they're all connected by line segments, forming a closed loop. Next, I'll convert the curve to a mesh before triangulating to generate faces. Finally, I'll extrude to add depth. With the shape defined, I then needed to adjust the position to align with the scan. I'm going to do something similar for the top surface, this time just using a simple rectangle. I'll also add some cylinders that I'll use to cut out the holes on top. Two of the most important features on this entire model are the two holes that go straight through and are used for mounting. The scanner couldn't capture the inner detail of those holes, so they just got sealed off. I'll add two more cylinders and orient them diagonally to coincide with the entry and exit points of the original holes. With all of the necessary shapes defined, I'll impose a series of Boolean modifiers on the scan, adding the rectangles and subtracting the cylinders. So that's going to be our base mesh to which we can now make further modifications. For the cup holder, I'm going to be using these metal inserts I found on Amazon. After some measurement conversions, I defined two cylinders for the inner and outer diameter of the cup holder. I then positioned them over the original ashtray, adding another cube to take up the excess space. As before, these get added and subtracted from the base mesh using Boolean modifiers. I also used two large cubes as modifiers to slice off the top and bottom in order to get flat surfaces. Finally, I remeshed the scan and smoothed out any remaining edges. At long last, we were ready to print. I oriented the armrest face down so the nicest surface was on top. This required support material which proved to be a real pain to remove. The filament is ABS glass fiber, which has a nice matte finish, but sticks a little too well to itself. Fortunately, this surface will be hidden by the upholstery so the quality here doesn't really matter. The last step was to install the metal insert for the cup holder. This required some convincing, but eventually it did go. All right, so we've got our armrest here equipped with its brand new cup holder. Let's get inside the plane and see if this thing fits. Well, the armrest is a perfect fit on the door. There's only one last thing to test, and that's if our coffee fits in the cup holder. There we go. Believe it or not, this is more than just an aesthetic part 
of the plane. This is a mission critical component. This, in addition to being an armrest, is also the handle for this door. So that's a wrap on this project. Two armrests successfully installed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.